The three important logic gates are OR gate, AND gate and NOT gate. First we will discuss about OR gate. This is the symbol for OR gate. Here A and B are the two inputs to the OR gate and Y is the output. As the term OR indicates, we can interpret that if this input or this input is high, then your output will be high. Now coming to the truth table, A and B are the two input. So the various combinations possible for the input are 0, 0, 0, 1 or A is 1 and B is 0 or A is 1 and B is 1. These are the four combinations possible for the input. So let us see what will be the output. In this case, both the inputs are low. So definitely the output will be low. While in these two cases, second one and third one, one of the input is high. So if A or B is high, then you will get a high output. In the last case, both the inputs are high. So no need to say that one of the input is high. So the output will definitely be high. So this is the truth table for OR gate. Coming to the circuit, let us see how this will work. A and B are the two input terminals. We have connected two diodes over here, D1 and D2. The negative of the two diodes are connected together. And a 470 ohm is connected from this point onto this negative part. The output is measured across this point. And hence, we have connected an LED as an output device that will show the condition of output. If the output is high, the LED will glow. And if the output is low, then the LED will not glow. It is also possible to connect a voltmeter across this and directly measure the voltage output so that if the voltage output is high, you can say it is an on state and if the voltage output is low, you can say it is an off state. Coming to the working, if A or B is high, what happens is this diode will get a forward bias. That is a positive voltage at this positive end of the diode will forward bias this diode and it will connect. If it is the B point that is high, then this diode will get a forward bias and this will conduct. So the current will flow through this circuit and across the stress resistor and back to the negative. So the circuit is complete in this manner. So if you keep a LED over here, then current will also flow through this and these two points will be under the same potential and you will get a voltage that will lit this LED. A current will flow through it and the LED will be lighten up. The components required for this circuit would be two diodes. IN4007 is what I am going to use and a resistance 470 ohm. Then an LED. These are the components. These are the two diodes. You can see a silver ring at this end, top end, that corresponds to the negative terminal of the diode. So definitely this is the P side or positive side of the diode. So these are the two diodes, IN4007. Now this is the resistor 470 ohm. The color code is yellow, violet, red. And this is the LED that we are going to use. We will be doing a connection on this breadboard. Breadboard is a platform where you can do your connections very quickly and comfortably. Actually, all these points A, B, C, D, E, these five points correspond to one single point of connection. The next five points corresponds to another point of correction. The next five holes is another and this is another and so on. So in a breadboard, you can have 
large number of different points that is here there are 60 vertical lines so 60 different points can be had in this section similarly this section is another part here also you can have entirely different 60 different points so what i mean is if a b c d is one single point f g h i j is some other point there is no connection between this line and the top line now coming to this horizontal side you can see that from this point to this point that is half of the bread broad length there are 25 points and this constitute a single point here this 25 lines in the ne next row constitute a different point now coming to the bottom of the breadboard here also you can have a horizontal line here also another horizontal line now when we observe the breadboard all together you can see that this is one point it breaks over here and this second half is another point this is one point and this is another point this is one point this is another point this is one point and this is another point so when you make a circuit please see to it that you make your circuit on one half comfortably you don't mix the circuit or use this part of the circuit because there is a break over here and here to have a more clear idea about breadboard and its connection i can show you how it looks like from the back that is when i remove this double sided sticker from here what i can observe is this so these are just metal pieces so you will admit they are common points vertically and this constitute a common line this is another line with a break over here so this is different line different line this is another point this is another point here of course one or two pieces of metal is lost this is a damaged breadboard these are the jumper wires that i'm going to use for the breadboard connection these wires are very useful for breadboard and it is not much costly also this is available on online today this end is known as the male end and this is also a male end so this is a male male jumper wire this is a female female jumper wire similarly male female jumper wires are also available in the market first i will connect two diodes d1 and d2 on the breadboard and connect their negative terminals with the help of a single wire like this this is positive end this is the silver ring negative end now i will place one more diode in a similar fashion see to it that the legs enter the hole well so this is another diode this is a positive end this is a negative end so now i will connect this negative end of the diode 1 with the negative end of the diode 2 using this jumper wire this is the wire for convenience sake i would like to extend this common point with the help of an additional wire to some other point and from there i will connect this 470 ohm to the baseline and also the led from the same point to the same baseline at this moment this line and this line is connected by this yellow wire now i'll take a connection from here and extend it to some other point the, it is plugged in here and it is extended to this point that is this common point is extended by an orange wire to some other point now 470 ohm and led will be connected to that point here i will connect this resistance from this point to the negative 
point that I wish to give in this horizontal line. I have connected the resistance. The resistance does not have polarity. So, there is no positive and negative end for the resistance. So, you can connect it either way. And now, I intend to give my negative voltage at this down line, horizontal line. Parallel to this resistor, LED is connected. The longer leg of the LED is the positive terminal and the shorter one the negative. So I will connect the positive leg over here and the negative leg over down. Now we will arrange for a battery over here. This is my battery box. I have used three cells of 1.5 volt each so that the total will be 4.5 volt. These are the two ends of the wire I have taken for the breadboard. I will connect the positive wire from the battery box onto this first horizontal line and the negative wire from the battery box onto this very bottom line. So, I have given the positive voltage onto this line and negative voltage to this line. Now, I will connect two wires A and B for the two diode inputs. For the sake of identification, I will use a green wire for the end A and a red wire for the end B. So, this is a B terminal input. These are my two input wires. Green is A and red is B. And here this is the positive potential and this is the negative voltage. Now as per the truth table, we will check for the various conditions. We will keep A low, B low, then check for the output. Then A low, B high, then a high, B low, then A and B high. We will check for the output. So these are my two input points. Green is the input A and red is the input B. This first line is the high input point of the battery and this is the low input point of the battery. So first condition I am going to check is A is low and B is low. So, there is no output, LED does not light up. So, the condition 0, 0 input, the output is 0. Now, I will take B from the low point and put it in high point. So, now the condition is A is 0 and B is high. Then the output is also high and that is why the LED is lit up. Now, the next condition would be A is high and B is low. A the green wire is high and B the red wire is low and now the condition is the LED still lights up so the condition 0 1 input gives you a high output. Now the last condition that would be A is low sorry A is high and B is also high. So, I will take A and B and put it in the high point and you can observe the output, it is still high. So, input 1, 1 gives you uh, output 1. So, this truth table for OR gate is verified through the circuit. Now, as an extension for this, we can connect a voltmeter across this LED and take the voltmeter reading also for just for confirmation. I am introducing this voltmeter onto the circuit. I am connecting it at the same point as that of the LED. The positive of the voltmeter should go to the positive of the LED and negative of the voltmeter should go to the base earth line. You can make the measurements with this voltmeter along with the LED. So, my first condition is A is low and B is low. So, this 
so the led does not light up and the voltmeter does not show any output now the next condition would be a0 and b is are high so the led lights up and the voltmeter is now showing a voltage 3.5 the next condition is a is high and b is low so a is high and b is low so now again the led is lit up and the output is high the voltmeter shows 3.5 now the last condition would be a is high and b is high then again the led is lit up and the output voltage is 3.5 this voltmeter reading can be also included in the tabular column as an output measure